I think the crime of fiat is that it's somebody else determining our course, right? Somebody else says, well, we're going to manufacture money that didn't take work to create and blend it in invisibly, right? Indistinguishably from the money that did create work, from the things that did create work. And we're going to put this lie at the same level as the truth. All right, Thomas Strolight, welcome back to Bitcoin for Millennials. Thank you. Good to be back. What are we up to today? Well, I was thinking maybe as a celebration for episode 100 of the podcast, uh, I'm uh, for one, super happy to talk with you. But also I was thinking maybe we can uh, kind of jam around the spiritual case for Bitcoin, if you're up for it. All right. Well, I'm I'm certainly up for it. I, you know, I, spiritual is such a broad word, and That's we true. each have our own definition of it potentially. And so, I, just maybe some uh, disclaimers up front. This isn't the religious <laughs> case for Bitcoin, perhaps, no. and uh, it isn't necessarily an airy fairy case for Bitcoin. But it's uh, at least for me, if we're talking about spirituality, it's the Non tangible aspects of it, the, mm -hmm. you know, the, um, I, and not necessarily political either, right? Like the personal, heartfelt, yeah. self actualizing, intangible aspect of Bitcoin. Is that all right? right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course. I, uh, I think I'll ha I have a fun uh, question to see where we are both at, right? With yeah. regards to spiritual. But I wanted to read um, a tweet that I saw um, of you which okay. goes like this. Money has meaning. It means work. Take the meaning, the work, out, and you have meaningless money. And when you work for something that is meaningless, that shatters the meaning of your life, put meaning back into money, put it back into your life. Wow. That was... Yeah, you wrote that. <laughs> that, that was good. I don't know when I wrote that. <laughs> yeah, that's but good. I like it. Mm, yeah. So my question is, why is the the forced use of the fiat money, you know, the money by decree. Why is that such a spiritual crime? Hmm. You know, I, I think it's, it's a, it's a, well, let's, let's use the word spirit, right? Like human beings have a free spirit. And when we talk about a free spirit or the spirit of freedom, it is to determine our own course using our minds, right? You, use, using what we have at our disposal. And, I, I, and I, I think the crime of fiat is that it's somebody else determining our course, right? Somebody else says, well, we're going to manufacture money that didn't take work to create and blend it in invisibly, right? Uh, indif indistinguishably from the money that did create work, from the things that did create work. And we're going to put this lie at the same level as the truth. And there's nothing you can do about it. You can't stop it. You know, the, the dollar printed out of thin air for no effort is indistinguishable and equal to the dollar that was earned by hard work. And so it's an injustice uh, that takes place in your attempt to realize your your full capacity right like at, at the lower levels of earning money you do so to put food on the table and put a roof over your head but at the higher levels you're trying to say well what is my purpose what is my goal my mission in life and take a look we're just past the u.s election and you elon musk jumped in to support uh, Donald Trump. Why? Because he has these very, he's not chasing making another billion dollars. He's already got $200 billion, but he has a personal mission or various personal missions that he thought he wouldn't be able to realize if it were for all the interventions and all the restrictions on his freedom to realize his spirit that was being imposed by government red tape and government bureaucracy and force and limitation is a very overt example of what fiat money does subvertly and covertly uh, and, and you know attempts to do in an invisible manner so that's a bit of a long answer already to the question of you know it 
it violates your your f- potential to explore um, what's possible for you by stealing f- what you create rationally and creating an arbitrary system that intervenes and interferes with your freedom. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think it's a fun question to start because where my mind goes, basically there's, I think, two things to unpack, right? So what do you think people are here or humans are here to do, right? Or what is the opportunity they have to experience yeah. or reach, let's call it like that, it, you know, in their life? Yeah. You know, what is, what is, what is the higher calling in the life that you got? right? Whatever that is. And the other part is okay, but how, how is that being influenced or how is that being corrupted? Right. And I think Elon Musk, uh, how I would use this example is like, okay, he gets to live his attempt at it, at his higher, highest purpose. You know, he's crazy about space uh, exploration, right? He wants to go to Mars. That's his big achievement in his life. Mm-hmm. And he needed to get that rich. He needed to get that amount of dollar units, right? To get to the point where he could live that out. Yeah. And I'm thinking about, okay, but how does someone that has, you know, a thousand dollars emergency fund and nothing else, um, you know, living in some area where there's not a lot of other opportunity or whatever, like how would a person like that get to living like that? Right. How, how right. could they explore that for themselves? So do yeah. they also need $200 billion units to get to a point, you know? Oh, it depends they, what your goal is. You know, it really depends what your goal is. And again, I think with Elon Musk, he wasn't really pursuing $200 billion. Like he wasn't pursuing the fiat, measured Mm -hmm. goal his goal as you said is to put humanity on mars you know and and it's been a bit of a circuitous circuitous trip uh to get there even to get to having that ambition you know he had to he had to first have succeeded financially enough that he could think that he could do something of this nature right that is that is my point yes yeah yeah. yeah. And so, I mean, we all have to go through this spiritual journey of gathering what we can, putting in what efforts we can, learning what works and what doesn't work, and hopefully retaining our soul, our spirit in the process and not selling it out or aban- or giving up hope on it or, you know, giving up hope on finding what our purpose is. And I, I think, you know, many people listening probably don't know exactly what their biggest purpose is uh and, you know and they may be f- they, they may be pursuing a fiat monetary goal or they may be without a goal um and i i think what will be really interesting if we go into it in this discussion is how does getting involved in bitcoin and you know potentially other tools help you find your purpose mm-hmm. what 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 do you need to do to to find your purpose and your purpose is unique to you, right? I can't tell you what your purpose is. I mean, I can tell you what your purpose is, but it's not true. I don't know what your purpose is. Mm-hmm. It's hard enough to know what my purpose is. And it, and purpose is something that changes. You may have like a particular goal that you can see and articulate and focus on. And then when you get there, it's not, that's it. Your life is over. It's like, now you need to find your next purpose. Mm -hmm. Um, and that can be a journey of years and just finding and articulating the next goal to go to. Uh, so it's, uh, that's kind of the nature, (laughs) the nature of life. And you may have small purposes, you may have big purposes, right? I, I think purpose and goal are words that often get interchanged, but purpose is this really big goal. Right. Are you looking to save in Bitcoin for your retirement? Meet OnRamp, the leader in Bitcoin financial services. OnRamp has just launched the industry's first Bitcoin IRA with multi-institution custody. That means unparalleled support, transparency, and peace of mind for your retirement. With OnRamp, you can verify your assets directly on chain and protect them with the support of three independent institutions, eliminating the risks of a single point of failure. Are you ready to take control of your Bitcoin retirement? 
visit the link below or go to onrambitcoin.com to learn more about onram's bitcoin ira yeah i think that ties into how i think about it is it doesn't matter how big the purpose is right i think that doesn't really matter it's more about that you have like the time and space to yeah. explore that right I, I think that's also what i tried to say with elon like mm-hmm. he has the time and space <laughs> you know he right. can buy the time and space basically um yeah. well to work on what for him is his highest uh, yes uh, yeah so uh, let's have a little bit of fun with the term right space exploration is his goal right now yeah but at any point in time you have a certain amount of freedom Sometimes it's because you have a certain amount of money or because you have a certain amount of time. And and that would be described as a space, right? Like you have this space that you can explore and achieve things within. (laughs) And then sometimes you can break, right? So we're all in the space exploration business, right? (laughs) And that is, uh, it's just, we have different definitions of what the Mm -hmm. space that we're bound to and constrained by is. And many times people might just say, I just want to escape from this particular space. I hate yes. my, I hate my fiat job. I hate my school. I, I hate the circumstance that I'm in. And that creates a sense of ambition to do things that will get you out of the space that you're trapped in um, and, and freedom from that. So that, that in and of itself is a worthy goal because yes. it'll allow you to then explore a different space in which you can find a goal yes. that's perhaps more self-actualizing more more ambitious yes. than just i don't like what i have it's like i i'm in a better space and i can create something really wonderful for myself for some period of time and mm-hmm. others as well yeah i think what you talk about is doing that in a conscious way right not feeling that you are led or forced or victim of a certain uh, mm-hmm. uh how do you say that like um uh, certain consequences or limitations or you know what whatever and i i think if we then jump to okay but why is that uh, we talked about the 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 use of fiat money is is that the reason for the fact that you know people are not right. able to create that time and space or explore explore that space you know for whatever they're searching yeah. for how how high that yeah. purpose is or whatever right listen Does the f- fiat yeah. is part of a broken system it's and bitcoiners certainly like to say fix the money fix the world so maybe it's a very big important part of it but it's not the only part of it right and and nor is bitcoin the only part of a fixed world Bit- bitcoin is intended to be an anchor or a rock inside a fixed world that you can grab onto and and then do something more than just count the number of Satoshis that you have, right? Mm -hmm. Like there's more to Bitcoin than just stacking Bitcoin. There is the identification of your purpose. And I've often said, you know, when people say you should never spend your Bitcoin, I strongly disagree with that. I think you should spend your Bitcoin to buy yourself the time and space to explore and realize your purpose, right? So especially if, you know, if Bitcoin's freed you from fiat slavery, What's it freed you to do, right? To sit around and not be a fiat slave? Well, maybe that's better than being a fiat slave, but it's not, that's not your purpose yet. It's now freed you to identify your purpose and pursue it to whatever degree and extent you yes. can. And I, I've had this conversation with a number of people and, and they found it quite inspiring. <laughs> so I, I really urge people to think, you know, Bitcoin is about this long term freedom that it gives you. And, and what is your freedom for except to discover the things that you, move you the most, that you're most passionate about, that stir your spirit? Right? Yes. So Bitcoin is spiritual money. I've written a lot about this. And, and I think that the real treasure of Bitcoin is that it helps you discover your true self and realize your true self. Like the discovery of your true self is one thing to say, to say, I want to go to Mars or I want to build mm. a temple to this or I want to, you know, I want to create this novel or whatever and not just to say i want to Mm -hmm. but to do the thing right to see to say i am working towards it in a realistic manner in an honest manner that it will be realized in my lifetime or a hundred lifetimes from now and i'm making a particular contribution to it this is what you, you know human existence is really all about it's one of the big things that differentiates us from the rest of the animal kingdom or even most of the rest of life on earth is we have this creative capacity and 
we want to exercise our creative capacity. We want to know how to direct it and we want it to be effective. We want to create things that really exist in the world. And there's so much diversity in the things that human beings create and try to create. So that to me is a big part of the spiritual journey that Bitcoin sets people on. And again, I've written a lot about it. I think my most popular essay, The Legendary Treasure of Satoshi Nakamoto, I started writing it about Bitcoin being a spiritual awakening and why it is that the story of Bitcoin causes a spiritual awakening for so many people. Again, not necessarily religious, although religious in some cases for people, but this going from this sleepy, negative, hopeless mm. world to a world of hope and belief and efficacy in oneself and, you know, and then taking the actions to realize one's potential. What, what is it that's so magical about Bitcoin? And I, you know, I started writing that piece and it was, well, it's the story of Bitcoin. Like Satoshi created this thing. He created this thing that is incorruptible and is honest and is in, you know, in, indestructible and corrupt inviolable all of these you know incredible things and he didn't do it for money he didn't do it for power he didn't do it for fame it wasn't an ego trip he was on he did it to exercise and realize the potential of what he could create and then he he walked away because walking away from the fortune was mm -hmm. part of the creative process of creating bitcoin because if he kept the money bitcoin wouldn't be what it what it is but it it's it's so much better than what it would have otherwise been because he egolessly stepped away from it. And so I think this is a story that inspires so much hope in people because it's such a story of achievement and attainment. And people say, well, this is possible in this world. There is someone who will do something not for money, not for mm. power, not for fame, and do it well enough and creative enough that it can last forever. And so that is a monument in and of itself. It's a statue to say, like, incredible things are possible for human beings. And here's someone who was in anybody, a nobody, a who nobody knows who, who mm -hmm. did it. So why can't I do something great yes. as well myself? Yes. It's, it's an invitation in that sense, yeah. I'd say. Right. And, and that's, and, and that's also yeah. Satoshi showed like the true treasure for Satoshi wasn't being rich. It was demonstrating to the world that he could create that the money, this thing that he wanted to see exist mm. could be created. And, yes. and I think that's the message of Bitcoin for everybody else. It's like, if you discover what the thing that you want to see exist in the world is, you can make it exist. And money's uh, perhaps a path or a means to it necessar necessarily or not, but that's not the end. Money is not an end in and of itself. It's a means to, to an end. And sound money is a means to a sound end. Well, it's we're it. back to the meaning again, right? Yeah. The means is the meaning, which was the quote that you read at the beginning. So these words are, and concepts are colliding. I'll, I'll, I'll finish and add on that. I think what you just described is perhaps the meaning of purpose, is that you are able to put into the world what you would want to see or put in the world, yeah. that, that you are actually able to do that, to make that exist, to manifest that yeah. into the world. That yeah. sounds to me so, like the definition of purpose. Yeah. So like if you look throughout history, there are different moments in time when human beings are really creative. They really thrive in having a purpose and attaining a purpose. And those are the people we remember in history. They discovered physics. They discovered the planetary motion around the sun. They invented aqueducts. They, they did these great things because they believed, they had hope, they believed that they could do, do those things in this world. And then there were dark ages where nobody managed to really produce anything and there was hopelessness in the world. And we, I think we were, you know, the early part of the 20th century and certainly the 19th century was filled with hope and the belief we were inventing things. Industrialization was coming to pass. The automobile was invented, telecommunications, electricity, like all these amazing inventions and achievements and large scale engineering. And then we ended up in this place where people were kind of hopeless and feeling worthless and not knowing how they could contribute. And I think we're going, you know, that, that's a pendulum that swings. The question is how long yes. it takes before it swings yes. back. And my sense is that for Bitcoiners, it's swinging back really quickly. Like Bitcoiners are the people in the world who have lots of hope. They're working hard towards creating a better world. They have definitions of what's better in that world. And it's spreading 
you know, like it or not, uh, what Donald Trump's campaign was about and why he won so decidedly was very much that people wanted to have hope again. They wanted, a, at the very least, a better economy. And at most, or at, at more so, they wanted to be able to pursue their dreams, to, to identify their purpose and, and go for it. And, th and that's certainly why, why were his advisors or the people who teamed up with him, Elon Musk, a dreamer who dreams we can go to Mars, or Robert Kennedy Jr., who dreams we can make America healthy again and get rid of all the toxins in our food and all of these things. These are hopeful ideas, big mm. hopeful ideas. Yeah. And they mirror a lot of what Bitcoiners really believe in. So I don't, I don't want to confuse and confound, but the spirit of hope is mm -hmm. re-entering the world. And I welcome all these other things that aren't Bitcoin that bring back the spirit of hope. <laughs> and I certainly applaud Bitcoin for what it's done to bring hope to the spirit of so many people uh, in, in a realistic way, right? It's not a false hope. And that's kind of the difference between Bitcoin and a lot of the things that imitate it, right? They say, I'll get you rich quick. And then they pull the rug out from under your feet. Bitcoin doesn't do that. It, it's verifiable and honest. And it, it's yeah. real structure of long-term realistic hope and and that's very spiritually uplifting that you've got something that you can take for the rest of your life and and whatever time horizon you're after and if you're after a thousand year time horizon you know you can count on bitcoin if yeah. you understand it properly what i make of that is that yes this journey of understanding bitcoin right this kind of like the invitation that you talked about, then, you know, you, you get on this journey, you study, you challenge yourself, you challenge your beliefs, your understanding, um, you know, your own grit, perseverance, whatever. And through that journey, you realize that, um, yeah, th there is more than you thought, you know, you can be bigger than what you thought you could, you, you can basically achieve anything or at least try to achieve it or some, something like that and then bitcoin is this tool that can enable you just financially right so to give you the space and time to explore but i think mm -hmm. what you just said about the verifiable part because i think that's important it's that that serves as some sort of anchor like that that understanding yeah. or your conviction in bitcoin yeah. based on your own work, your own reflection, your own journey. Uh, I think, yeah. as we talked about in the last episode, by the way, that's number 51 for everyone. We talked about oh, so how... You've recorded 40, 48 episodes since we last spoke. Yeah. It doesn't feel like it was that long ago. Yeah. yeah. You're a machine. It, it's really fun. Um, mm -hmm. We spoke about that Bitcoin is the only cult in the world, right? Where everyone invites other people to think for themselves and not listen to each other. You know, that's the entire point. If you listen to people talking about Bitcoin and that you should get into Bitcoin, you don't have to believe them. You can do the work yourself and verify for yourself. Yeah. And I think yeah. that journey is could could trigger more like a I don't want to say spiritual awakening, but more like the 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 feeling that invitation and wanting to go into that more. I think it's part of the rabbit hole, but also the the conclusion, the end conclusion okay, Bitcoin is this perfect money. I can verify this for myself. I can move from the old paradigm to the new paradigm. This financially yeah. gives me time and space to explore further. Like it, It's like the walk and the talk. I say that a lot. Right? Like that it, it is the proof, the, the, the proof of the proposition that was put in front of you. You can verify that yeah. for yourself. And, and then it serves as an anchor for whatever you want to explore after that. Yeah. Indeed. Fun, fun to talk about. Okay, I, uh, you, you, you talked about uh, also manifestation. I, I had another question, and that is, do you think that like then the, the like the growing the growing adoption of Bitcoin is kind of like a decentralized collective manifestation, as in Bitcoin was first an idea in someone's head, right, in Satoshi's head, yeah. and they they manifested it, right? They they wrote it down, they shared it, they, they code it, they talked yeah. to people, they refined, they left, as you talked about. No, it's loose in the world and, and people pick it up. This thing just keeps slowly on growing. It's like an organic thing. Yeah. Um, 
And now people are are paying attention to it. We are talking yes. now, people are listening, they're going to share, they're going to talk, right? So we're yeah. putting energy towards this this thing. We even have uh, <laughs> the, the the finance bros paying attention, you know, like like it's it's slowly manifesting in the world. And yeah, so my question is, do you think calling this like a decentralized collective manifestation is a is a good term for it? Uh, you're welcome. You know, it's decentralized, so you're welcome to call it what you want. Uh, <laughs> I think it's a mouthful calling it a decentral collective manifestation, but it's accurate. Right? And, and all of these definitions come with some context around their accuracy, right? But like what part you want to zoom in on or what part you want to focus on. Um, it's definitely an effort of many people. Maybe the term collective is ambiguous because people think of collectivism versus, mm -hmm. you know, be, being being made up of many people, but not all in agreement. And a big part of Bitcoin's strength is the individuality of yes. all the people in its collective, yeah. right? The disagreement, how yeah. hard it is to change is a function of the fact that we all disagree. Yes. I, I yes. made one very short tweet once it was a like, Bitcoin divided, we stand, right? As opposed to united, we stand divided, we fall. Like we, our strength is in our division. Yes. Uh, and that's also and, the point of Bitcoin that you don't, you don't, yeah. it doesn't matter. Right. It yes. doesn't matter if someone right. doesn't agree with you or if you don't like and, it. And the beauty of individual spiritual pursuit is mm. you may want to go to Mars and I may want to go to Venus and somebody else may want to stay on Earth and say, you know, and, and someone may want to save the Earth and someone may want to focus on building better transportation and someone may want to make music. We don't all have to agree. We don't even have to know what anybody else's purpose is, right? Like freedom comes from not minding other people, but people's business, but minding your own and being able to pursue your own business. And that's what Bitcoin allows for every individual, right? That they don't have to worry about what somebody else is doing right? and they can worry about themselves. They can mind their own business and they can pursue their own business and nobody else is stealing from them in the process of them per pursuing their own mm -hmm. purpose. I think that's a really, really beautiful idea. And, and that's the idea that's manifesting for many people. And we drifted from it, like the, the current or at least recent <laughs> political atmosphere has been, we're all in this together. Everybody's got to support everybody else. Everybody's got to make sacrifices for everybody else. And you, we could see what kind of monstrosities and abominations that led to, whether we study the history of collectivism or we just lived through COVID where everyone was forced to wear a mask to protect someone else or take a vaccine so that you don't transmit the disease to somebody else. We, you know, and our lives, our purposes were all put on hold for each other seemingly, but nobody's purpose was able to be pursued. So I, I think this is part of the really big thing. Like we need free freedom to achieve our purpose uh, individually. Yes. And we can each have, and if someone doesn't have a purpose, that's their problem, not your problem. It's not your purpose to give them purpose, unless that's what you decide your purpose is. And so you can, you can pursue, and it's not, it's not greedy to do that. It's not selfish to do that. It's re it's real. It's the human experience is to mm. identify your purpose and find a way to pursue it in the world in which you find yourself. We now find ourselves in a world where you can do that better without having to play the fiat game. Like I think we talked about Elon Musk, Elon had to play the fiat game in order to be able to play the find your purpose game. Yeah. I think many of us in Bitcoin are idealists who hope to not have to play that game. Uh, we don't have to appeal to government printing fiat dollars to allow us to have a grant so that we can build our electric car and yeah. you know build our missiles into space. Like we're able to do it through merit of the ideas on their own. And I don't mean to diminish Elon Musk. I don't want to make this about Elon Musk. He's just he's such a contemporary figure and, and we've just had the US elections, which he played a big part in that it's hard not to pay attention and, and point to to that sort of thing right now. Yeah. Um so yeah, so collective manifestation. Yeah. And no, individualist, <laughs> yeah, a, man, a, individualist collectivist manifestation, yeah, yeah, maybe. Yeah. Well, it's a good reflection. And I, I, I totally agree because it is an individual uh, mind virus, in a sense, right? Yeah. The, 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 the adoption of Bitcoin. So yeah. And yeah. different people embrace it for different reasons, right? Exactly. Different people yeah. are attracted to it for different reasons. 
when people fall deep into the rabbit hole, they, they're falling through different parts of the rabbit hole. Mm. Uh, there, there's consensus about one thing and one thing only, which is what the last block was, right? And, and I guess every block beforehand, but what the meaning of that is, and what, the, what Bitcoin sets you free to do is entirely up to you. But I, th but I think that that idea is beautiful, that there's like a, a, ba a, a base layer where we connect or agree, right? Yeah. That we all yes. tap into and take out from, right? Because it's right. it's not like fiat money. It's not like a um, zero sum game. It's a mutually beneficial game. So mm -hmm. if we adopt this base layer together, right? Mm -hmm. The fair mo the fair money, the the energy money that that represents something when we use it to to exchange basically yeah. energy with each other, right? Everything that yeah. you see costs energy to create or maintain. Right. So if we have that base layer, then everyone can figure whatever they want to figure out after that is basically mm -hmm. what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. I, and I guess this, this is the the question around it. Is it enough and is it too much? And I, I think it's easy to say it's not too much. It's not too controlling, right? It, it, like the rules of Bitcoin with the limits it puts on you are, are you can't spend somebody else's money and you can't print money out of mm -hmm. thin air. Yeah. That's the limit. So it's not too Apparently many. Apparently that basic. <laughs> yeah. Like that's really what it comes down to, <laughs> yes. right? Yeah. The, the, thou cannot steal and yeah. thou cannot counterfeit. Uh, you know, you can't steal by proxy. Radical. That's, <laughs> that's the limits of it. And then, and from there we get to build. So, so mm -hmm. to me, the question really is, is that enough? Um, and it may not be enough in and of itself, but it inspires mm. us to pursue the things that might be enough, right? All the people who are putting efforts into improving Bitcoin, writing software to use Bitcoin as it is, making proposals to see if they can persuade everybody else to agree to changes to Bitcoin and promoting Bitcoin so that all sorts of businesses can be built soundly. And also the awakening to here's other stuff that's broken. Like, the, okay, we found a way to fix the money. The money's still broken. So we're fighting mm -hmm. to fix the money, but recognizing there's other things that are broken, education, healthcare, housing, art, you know, uh, so many yeah. different politics. Maybe we can fix those things too on the basis of having seen one way to fix these things. Yes. And, yes. It, and it'll again require tremendous creativity. The, an, the answer isn't Bitcoin for, for everything, right? Bitcoin sets mm -hmm. a stage where you can build on a solid foundation, but it isn't the buildings. It isn't Bitcoin oh, isn't a healthcare system. It isn't an yes. education system, but take a look at how much people who've been exposed to Bitcoin start to take on the responsibility of figuring out how to take care of their own health, how to educate themselves. Again, individually, they're, they're looking at it. They're not trying to fix the entire schooling system all at once, unless that's their purpose, but they're trying to fix what they know and they're trying to fix how they live and, you know, and all of the, all of the, and how they eat and all these kinds of things. So Bitcoin fixes, Bitcoin makes you believe that you can fix things off of a sound basis. And it doesn't give you the answers. It just gives you the confidence and hope to do the work, to make those things real, and then re-actualize their benefits. Yes. I, I, I couldn't agree more. I think in my mind, I go from, it starts as the invitation. And then when mm -hmm. you adopt it and see that there's this base layer um, where people that you don't have to know that you don't have to trust that you don't have to um uh, think about basically they can all tap into this mutually beneficial system mm -hmm. that becomes your base layer for life and from there you start exploring as you said you start building whatever you want you start you know doing doing whatever you want not not being led anymore by the fiat money that constrained you basically right And because yeah. you are living that life, the invitation turns into or, or evolves into this mirror, I would say, where you see yeah. that there is like a group of people that adopted yes. this new base layer yes. and they are acting in a certain way or talking or thinking right. or collaborating or building or, yeah. you know, whatever. Um, they're doing things in a certain way because they have, I'll, I'll use the word, they have a, a collective bond of... Yeah values or some sort of foundation true using bitcoin yeah. 
that anything built on top of that layer um, yeah. has to adhere to these base values. Yeah. It cannot be less than those base values yeah. because you know that there's a reality in which right. that foundation yeah. um, is is adopted. So anything yeah. you do based on on the on the Bitcoin foundational layer has to adhere to the principles, the values, etc. And you you cannot. I don't know, fuck around anymore or like under deliver or whatever, but it, that, that's not a bad thing because you're invited to do so. You will have purpose or find meaning yeah. in adhering to the, to the base layer. Right. Well, uh, let, let me say a few, a few things in response to that. First, you're, you're using the word collective and I think that word's been hijacked. So I'm going to just suggest to you to consider. <laughs> yeah. It's together. up to you. You don't have, but to use the word "common" instead of oh, "common." Okay, uh, they have a common bond. They have a common purpose. They have common agreement on on what they're after. There's a small point, so I don't want. I don't no, want good to point, Good point. Think Very good. Point. When you're thinking of which word to choose, if "common" works, maybe maybe lean, lean to that. And I, I think so many of us have discovered not just that Bitcoin has awakened something within us, but we've discovered other people that Bitcoin has awakened something within. Sometimes exactly. we think it's the same yes. thing that it's awakened within us. And and certainly the early parts of the Bitcoin journey are very similar to a lot of people. And they are, oh my God, I can I can get freedom of my time and freedom from my slavery because I work so hard and I'm not keeping up or something's taken away from me. Like people are cynical, disillusioned with the fiat world. For me, I worked for 20 years, worked my ass off, built my life's work and had it all rug pulled out from under me. Not entirely because of the nature of the fiat system, but the nature of office politics and business whatnot and disruption that I wasn't really prepared for. And when that happened, it threw me into a, uh, dip a spin of depression and hopelessness. And it was a good thing I discovered Bitcoin uh, within a few years of that because Bitcoin gradually built up my hope and my confidence and ultimately then helped me find a purpose for a period of time that really motivated me. And mm -hmm. it wasn't about money, right? Like Bitcoin was helping me understand money better, but it really awakened within me this desire to be a writer. and. And it gave me matter, subject matter to write about. And so I ended up having this wonderful experience for a few years of being a writer. And now I'm, I may still continue to write or I may pursue something else. I'm, I may be in between purposes, but I'm, I find I'm not interested in letting go of Bitcoin. I'm, it's continuing to fuel me and give me inspiration to say, okay, you'll find your next purpose or your, or you'll find your next big thing mm. with enough time. Take your time, use it to figure out what you're truly passionate about and want to pursue. And maybe taking a little bit of time is actually what I want, what I need to do right now, what I want to do right now, so that I can say to myself, you took the time to enjoy your time and you're not going to lie on your deathbed saying, why didn't I take a few months when I had the opportunity or the window to do this and relax? And again, that's a, a gift that Bitcoin gives not just because of its monetary ability to buy you time, but because it lets you think differently from what you've been told to think, which is you need to work 24 seven, you know, you need to work every day. You need to have a paycheck. You need to do this or that or the other. It's like, yeah, you only need to do that if you need to do that. If you don't need to do that, now what's the world going to tell you to do? And that's, and, and now it's up to you to figure out what to do, or you can continue to do what everybody else tells you to do, mm -hmm. but that's not going to, be you pursuing your purpose. That's going to be yeah. you doing what everybody else told you to do. I uh, I wrote down an, an, another tweet that I saw uh, of you where you talked about values like work, honesty, merit, and I think what what you just said and and what I said before it kind of ties into that. As in, there you have like a bar now. What you were talking about, you are like exploring or thinking about or reflecting on like, okay, what would I want to do next? And you have the time and space to do that. But yeah. these elements of work, honesty, and merit is kind of like part of the bar uh, that, that you can use to measure, you know, any idea that you would have for any next adventure or venture or, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I think it's really interesting that that is perhaps similar as um, what, what I mentioned about, you know, 
the people building on the foundational layer, they have a certain yeah level um yeah or I call it a bar, like a quality bar or something that any any endeavor, any spending of energy and time should um at least be at before you decide to continue it or or else perhaps it's futile or something so okay. yeah i think that's an interesting thought it sounds hard but i i mean for me it sounds actually very positive because then you don't get into a new adventure uh or or giving something else something new attention that you're not fully consciously um choosing for you, you know, when you're excited about an idea, you don't really care how hard it is. When it exactly. feels like it's your purpose, yes. it doesn't feel hard, right? It feels like you're engaged, you're in this flow state, you're engaged in doing what you want to be doing. So whether it's hard or not, like when people get out and, they, and they're into a particular sport and like if it's a competitive sport, they're in it. Yeah, of course, it's hard. They're getting hit. They're getting checked. They're getting... You know, they're, they're potentially getting injured. Why would anybody do this thing, right? If if your goal was to not work hard, like you're not even getting paid to do it if you're not a professional athlete. And yet you do it because it's joyful, right? It's filled with joy and purpose and, and self-actualization of realizing your efficacy as an athlete. And this is true of any purposeful activity that, that you pursue. So there's the, the notion that, I won't do a thing because it's too hard or because it's going to take too much time. Mm. It's really what you're saying is I don't want, I don't find that fulfilling enough from a purpose perspective to want to dedicate my limited energy, time, space. Yeah. To, and the whole point of purpose is finding the thing that you don't even think about it. You're like so excited. I can't wait to go and do this thing. Right? And if you're in a position where it's hard to get out of bed in the morning because you don't know what that thing is for you or you don't think you're pursuing it, it's incumbent upon you to figure out what that thing and to put the time and energy into figuring out what that thing is. There's lots of different ways to do it, but you've got to do it eventually or else you're going to be on your deathbed with regret saying, you know what, I really always wanted to be a uh, blank and I never even tried because... I made the excuse that it was too hard or that I wasn't good enough mm. or that this or that or the other, right? It's like, sometimes you just got to take a flying leap, you know, and the worst that'll happen is you'll discover that you don't actually like doing this thing or you need more practice at it, or you're not good enough at it to be what you're at, but don't be the one to tell yourself before you've even tried that you're not good enough at it. When I said to myself, I think I'm going to be a writer, I started writing and lo and behold, I just couldn't believe how good some of the stuff that was coming out of me was. I, I literally was in disbelief. Mm. I'm like, I'm capable of writing beautiful things. I didn't know I was capable of writing beautiful things. I should continue to do this. And, and, you know, I went, I went hard at it and, uh, and discovered what I, what I could do and also discovered some edges and limitations, you know, maybe I'm mm. not a novelist and, Maybe I can't write an epic poem and maybe I can't write poetry, but that doesn't mean I shouldn't continue to pursue writing if, as an art if it's yeah. something that drives me. And when it stops driving my passion, then I need to take pause, take rest, and figure out what it is that drives my passion. Yeah. So I, what I take out is like it, putting a name on the purpose. Or something, or yeah. trying to construct that upfront is is not the point because it's about. Um, I think for people listening, or and this also how I experience it. There's no there's no like label on the purpose or something. It's like oh, I'm I'm this thing is is it's is calling me, or I'm drawn into this, and I'm just gonna spend some time on it and see if I enjoy it and. If I learn along the way, if I see progression in myself along the way, and right. as you said, like sometimes I'm, I'm, you know, here behind the computer until one a.m. and I'm like, damn, is it one a.m. already? Yeah. But there's no, it doesn't feel like work. Yeah, because and this to me is, I want to make another really important point, like that you're doing the thing for the thing itself, not you're doing the thing for some other purpose. Like there are people, mm. there are people who want to be actors because they love the art of acting. There are people who want to be actors because they want to be famous. And there's, a very, there's two yes. very different things. The, yes. uh, the actor who wants to do it for the sake of acting enjoys the act of acting uh, mm -hmm. and not the act of <laughs> accepting awards for it or appearing in, 
in publicity shows or walking around and, and having people say, aren't you so-and-so? You're so famous. You were so great in that movie. It's a real distinction because putting your ego, you know, if you do it for the sake of being famous or rich or something, you're putting your ego first. You're putting a different purpose first and it will make you a less good actor. You'll take roles that will yes. make you famous rather yes. than roles that will be fascinating yeah. and interesting and develop your skills as, as an actor potentially. So you've really got to put your purpose ahead of everything else. I think that's another one of the things that's amazing about the Bitcoin story, right? Like the guy who created Bitcoin, none of us know his name. He put the purpose before even like he made it impossible for him to be famous. Even yeah. though Bitcoin was like the most famous thing in the world right now. I think and so. The pseudonym that he used was is very famous. It's not something that sticks to him. And so he was able to do it with integrity, such flawless integrity, because nobody was going to come up to him and slap him in the face or give him a big hug. Nobody knows who he is. I um what what you just said about just the about, about the creating part right it's also what uh, Rick Rubin talks about he had um i think it was in a podcast with Huberman or Lex Friedman where he says you know like the the creation should when you create something you should do it to the best of your ability with all your love and and attention and all these things and that should be enough or that is enough and yeah. whatever comes after that, when you put it out into the world, that's like a bonus. That's not what it's yeah. about. You know, you cannot influence how other people think about whatever right. you um, uh, created. And thinking about that combined with what you said, I think maybe for the last 10, 15 minutes, I think we can uh, take a nice uh, leeway into, we talked about this offline, uh, about the work of uh, Itzhak Bentov. I'll show it on the screen. We uh, sure. uh, he has a book called Stalking the Wild Pendulum and it's uh, it's about the mechanics of consciousness and when while you were talking I had to think because uh, think about a part in um, a lecture that's also on YouTube called From Adam to Cosmos and he says um, you know uh, and we also talked about this offline but uh, he says that everything in this physical world is a manifestation of the universal consciousness and that's all vibrations and sound etc but the one thing he said that I wanted to talk about is that, you know, yes, with with your attention, you can manifest things, but only only with love, you can really create something. So he said, if you have intent without love, it will never yeah. become um, uh, yeah. like, like a shared thing, right? So if you only create with intention without the love, then it's it's always inferior to what you create um with love and i think that's what you just put into words in in a different way it's about people can only see the quality or or how do you say the um um well yes, i'll, I'll see, try to put see your up. input basically when you when you put yeah. in the love right and I yeah, think about I, I, the Trevi well, fountain it. in rome yeah. for example and okay and like, yeah i i think that's it and, and this is this is what's so hard to see in, in a world of McDonald's and Starbucks and ugly you know, corporatized, <laughs> yeah. commoditized goods that you can't really put, that the makers of them can't really put their love into anymore. Mm. Yes. And, and the, the whole workforce is just, you know, taking a patty and stacking it and to put, putting shredded lettuce and stacking it and, yeah. and handing it to you in a box. And nobody's enthusiastic about it. You're not enthusiastic about eating it. They're not enthusiastic about serving it. You, there's no love. There's no, and you can see love when somebody puts it into it. Yes. And, it and it's hot. It's yeah. very hard to see in North America because everything's so corporatized and because we don't have the, the long lasting history of things like the Trevi Fountain to look at or the, you know, there's just so many monuments from an era where people built things with love in, in Europe that even though we're now in, a, in an age where we don't see that much love in things, you can still see the love all across. Um, all across the old world, the new world is lacking in it. And so 
it's hard for people to connect to that and recognize that until they see a great movie with great actors or you know some great work of art but even now you know the works of art have become commoditized and mm -hmm. and and ruined and like stripped of their love with the exception of the occasional thing and when the, the occasional thing is made with love it becomes a huge hit right it, it, everybody loves it because it's they reciprocate the love that it was made with and you can make things with love, right? And again, if you're feeling this lack of meaning in your life, it may well be because you have a job that doesn't allow you to put love into the work that you do, mm -hmm. or you're resentful of putting love into what you do because you feel exploited yes. because of it. I would say put the love into what you do <laughs> regardless, because it's only yourself that you're punishing by not putting the love into it. And yes, if someone's skimming profit off of the fact that you're putting love into it, you're still building, you're still putting love out into the world. Mm -hmm. And you're learning how to express your love and surrendering to the expression of love, right? Because people are shy about love, right? If I told you that I loved you, you might not reciprocate. I might be ashamed. Yeah. I might be embarrassed. So people are afraid to say they love. And in the same way, they're afraid to act as if they love because they fear the love not being reciprocated and it's an embarrassment. But the truth of the matter is no one will reciprocate your love if you never show it in the first place. So exactly. showing love is an act of risk taking. And it's a really, really important act of risk taking because you'll never experience love if you don't show it. And if you don't put, you know, and you'll never see what love you're capable of if you don't surrender into putting yeah. your, your love out there. Yeah. I mean, I, I get back to the words invitation and mirror is like the, the, the act is the invitation, right? The act of showing love is is the invitation yes. to receive it, is the invitation yes. to reciprocate it. Um, yes. And I think it's also then very true that it doesn't really matter what you would want to put uh, love into, you know, or how important other people think that is or how unattainable other people think that yeah. is, right? I mean, there's this famous clip so to mention Elon Musk one more time where uh, there's an interview with him and and the interviewer says like buzz aldrin and 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 uh what's his name armstrong like they don't believe yeah. you can do it and he starts crying he cries right and so mm -hmm. he's still it's still important for him what other people think about it but eventually it doesn't really matter because it's yeah. about are you able to put the love in into it right and so yeah. even if you have a job that you hate as you said that doesn't even invite you to put the love into it yeah. once you recognize that you know it's 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 time to do another thing because the the entire challenge of putting love into something is mm -hmm. is the journey that's going to show you that that is the only way and that it doesn't really matter what you put the love into and wait one one more thing one more thing before i forget you you said the commoditization right even at this fucking mcdonald's where everyone is in line just putting the patties on yeah. or whatever there's a tip right on the bill you tip them for just standing in line and stamping a thing. So even the tip, even the, 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 the extra expression of the appreciation of someone's love yeah. or quality or value that they yeah. put into the work that they do is commoditized, mm. right? That is where we are. That is where the pendulum has... That's everything, the commodity, uh, right? even appreciation, right? Yeah, that, that you can buy, the notion that you can buy love, that you can, that you can show love. Yes, by, yes, yes. By but money. this is the I end mean, of the pendulum is this. I think it's the most mm -hmm. practical example. Like this is the end, yeah. right? For a commoditized yeah. product, With you commoditized are basically forced to show love. <laughs> you know? mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I, and listen, oh, I don't know uh, where you are if McDonald's has the same slogan worldwide, but I think I'm loving it is McDonald's slogan. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I'm, I'm, nah. not, I'm not loving it. I, I, like, I don't mean to pick on McDonald's. No, right? no, it's what just I'm, an example. What I'm highlighting is the commoditization and yes. this lack of personal expression and personal yes. flair that you get to put into something because they want it to be standardized and commoditized because that's the promise to the consumer. And so consumers have come to expect a commodity commoditized loveless product right quality yes. is not yes. measured in the amount of love that's in the thing it's measured in how identical it is to the treatment so that i mean that if you want to use the word um <laughs> <laughs> what's the word i told you not to use collective <laughs> if you want to use the word collectivism you can use it to describe you know everyone gets the exact same big mac and wow. nobody you know so 
anyhow, um, I think, let me see if I can remember the point I wanted to make in closing is we're talking about it as if it's easy to put your love into something in a world that doesn't reciprocate love mm -hmm. and it can be really hard. Right. And yeah. so I, I don't want to make light of, I don't want you to think your failure, if you put your love into something and you don't receive it, and then you feel resentful and you don't want to put your love into it the next time or time and again, right? Like, I mean, there are people who are more outward love givers than, than other people who, no matter how much rejection they get, they still put out love into this world. Yes. And they're, they're really to be admired because they're the fountainheads of, of love, of love in the world. But if you see someone giving love, you know, if you find it hard to give your love as an initiation, at least when you see someone giving love, reciprocate, because that's where the magic is for you. And, and there may be other techniques or other times when you show love instead of showing uh, resentment or apathy. Um, so it's not necessarily easy, but it is, it's really, really important for your spirit. I and mean, yeah. that's what we said this podcast would be about. Yeah. I think this is a perfect moment to tie it back to the beginning, right? To end this sure. conversation, to tie it back because, you know, I asked the question, why is a forced use of fiat, you know, money by decree, such a spiritual crime? And, and we talked about, um, you know, that, that I think this whole hour almost, we talked about how um, the most valuable thing that you could experience in your life is this journey of, of, of the self-actualization, right? And going... Yeah through these different phases and and we said in the beginning there's there there are like two parts right and the second part is okay but how are you confined by by fiat money then and we and we touched on 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 some things right so if if your money gets devalued all the time and the reward for your finite time uh, uh or for the finite energy and time that you expend is something that can be created infinitely you know the energy and time you need to go on this self actualization journey is basically stolen from you by people that you know either consciously or, or or not doesn't really matter they're upholding a system that is designed to work against you and your individual journey basically mm -hmm. and yeah everything we talked about i'd say is hard for the majority of the collective <laughs> to, to achieve yeah if 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 we stay on this fiat money standard that keeps stealing the time and space and energy that everyone deserves to yeah explore i think part of the things that that we talked about right and and see if you can find that purpose um in your life by all means by all means um i'm reminded of uh if people don't have my book you can get it for free at swan.com slash why bitcoin we're still giving it away for free there and the last few chapters of that book are all about this there's like a chapter and th th when i say chapter every chapter is only like a two-page spread it takes only two minutes to read but there's one article there called why bitcoin is worthy of being loved and another one called why you need bitcoin and mm. those two in particular, really speak to what we've talked about here about how actualizing yourself and 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 putting love into something and understanding what's worthy of love and built with love um, is is all <laughs> is all a big part of what we've described. I've actually also written an article called "The Spirit of Bitcoin," which you can find on my Medium. And if we're talking about spirituality and stuff on my Medium, you'll find the legendary treasure of Satoshi Nakamoto and even one called "Proof of God," which is kind of a fun spiritual. Uh, piece that talks about creativity and uh, and and miracles that we experience every day. So that's yeah. a good time to wrap up. Awesome. I uh, I will link to all your writings in uh, in the show notes, of course, so people can check that out. Also, link to YouTube to watch uh, the legendary treasure. And uh, yeah, man, I think this was a really nice flow. I want to thank you for your time and your energy you. for. You know, Thanks. creating episode 100 together with me. So I'm uh, very grateful for that. Thanks, man. Very excited. Thank you for considering me for it. Thanks, brother. All right. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this episode, you can click here to find more just like it. And you can click here to find all Bitcoin for Millennials podcast episodes. I want to thank you again for watching. I appreciate your support and I'll catch you in the next episode.